Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be talking about something that could essentially mean the difference between life and death. For you experienced preppers out there, this is going to be old news. But for you rookies and intermediates like myself, this is something we should probably acquire while the getting is good. Let's get to it. Now, I'm not a certified medical health professional, so I don't have the authority to tell you whether or not taking these fish antibiotics are safe. Fish antibiotics should be used for their intended purpose only. Now, the number one reason why fish antibiotics are popular amongst preppers is because, of course, it takes a prescription to get these medications from a doctor. Whereas you don't need a prescription to buy fish antibiotics, which we're going to talk about, are essentially the exact same thing. This medication would be incredibly important in a collapse situation, considering that antibiotics since their inception have probably saved hundreds of millions of people. So believe it or not, until now I haven't owned any fish antibiotics. For one, it's a little harder to come by in Canada. You can't just go into a Walmart and buy it. They make it a little bit more difficult to access. There's a lot more regulation on these things down here. I was able to get some from a website called Fishmox Flex, I believe. I'll post a link to it in the description. There's a variety of places you can get this on the net. That was the place that seemed the most credible to me. Now, Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy have done a trio of videos on this topic. They also talk about expiration dates. Now the expiration dates on these are 2018. He cites a study that showed that uh, some of these antibiotics were still effective in some cases up to 10 years after their expiration date. And Dr. Bones is pretty meticulous with respect to the information that he provides in that it's all substantiated by peer-reviewed research. And as you can see here, this contains amoxicillin only 250 milligrams he goes into great depth about why it contains the standard human dose the conventional knowledge would be that uh, it's diluted in water so that's why they would uh, provide such a large dose to fish compared to humans obviously humans are much bigger than fish but his theory is that they come from the same factory but they do look exactly like the ones you're prescribed you know if it came down to the wire and this was all you had wouldn't you rather have it than not wouldn't you rather have some possibility of uh, eliminating any form of sepsis as a result of some sort of bacterial infection that you're more likely to acquire through the rigors of the post-collapse environment as there's going to be a higher incidence of injury because you're going to be doing a lot more physically laborious tasks in addition to that, I think as human beings, we've grown a lot more soft. We really do rely on medicine nowadays like this in order to combat the elements. Now, Dr. Bones does warn about the cautions of using antibiotics and he uses this word injudiciously. And basically, he means that you, know, you, you shouldn't just abuse it anytime you think that you have an infection. And this is where having a trained medical professional is going to come into play. So, you know, if you are planning on utilizing these to any extent, you should at least know somebody who uh, would be able to have a bit of discernment on whether or not you should use these in what dose. A very important point to consider and one of the reasons why you should seek the advice of a trained medical professional before administering any antibiotic is that different antibiotics are going to treat different types of infection and if you take the wrong one you run the risk of doing more harm than good. You can end up killing off some of the healthy bacteria and inadvertently cause the harmful bacteria to develop greater resistance to the treatment. And from what I gather, this is also why it's important to take the antibiotic after the symptoms have subsided to make sure that all the harmful bacteria have been eradicated. Another thing to consider with uh, fish antibiotics is that time is of the essence. Right now, they're legal to buy over the counter. You don't need a prescription. But pretty soon, uh, the more people who buy them and the further they crack down on, you know, in an attempt to combat the antibiotic resistance, they're probably going to be regulated at some point and you aren't going to be able to get them. So I'm not trying to fear monger you into buying these, especially from Thomas Labs or Fishmox Flex. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. But the fact is, it very well could be 
that these were regulated at some point down the road. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. All right, so now that I've opened up the container and made the environment inside non-sterile, I'm not sure how well this is gonna keep uh, with respect to the expiration dates, but I'm gonna reseal it. Now these don't look like the same ones that uh, Dr. Bones had on his, but it does say there a MOX 250. If I was uh, dying and it was a without rule of law SHTF situation, would I take it? Obviously I would have no other choice. Like I say, ideally this should only be prescribed by a certified physician, but uh, as we all know, in a grid down situation, we just won't have that luxury. So it's good to have alternatives just in case. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper O. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.